Virtual currency. Money has continued to take different forms over the years. Fiat money, or country currency, is a good medium of exchange, simple to use and guaranteed by the government. Nowadays, banks give you the tool to transfer and store value electronically instead of dealing with cash. If you deposit $1,000 cash into your bank account, your money turns to e-money or digital money, a number at the bank ledger. After depositing your money into the bank account, you can benefit from the financial services that the bank provides, such as sending money, getting a credit or debit card to buy merchandise from stores, make an online purchase and more. When you deposit your money in a bank, it shows you trust the institution and the government or the central bank who supervise it and guarantees your deposit. And you are pretty much certain that you can withdraw or use your money at any time you want. The value of your money or the number on the bank computers will remain the same. It is just digital. For instance, $100 in the account means you can withdraw or use only $100. Digital currency is the digital representation of real money, fiat, or what is known as legal tender. People can control their money. However, the bank is the one who will execute their orders since their money and transactions are registered in a centralized ledger at the bank. If you want to send money or make a transaction, you need to submit an order to the bank, and then the bank will process that order. First, they will check that you have credit on the account, the centralized ledger, and then send it to the beneficiary. And if your transaction is going to a beneficiary who maintains their account at a different bank, different ledger, the transaction might take much longer. Let's take this example. Ross, who lives in Sydney, wants to send a thousand US dollars to Emily in London. To execute this transaction, the bank in Sydney will debit Ross's account and inform an intermediary bank, for example, a bank in the US that maintain accounts for both banks, the bank in Sydney and the bank in London, to do the electronic transfer between the two banks' accounts at their ledger. And when the bank in London is notified of executing this transfer, they will credit Emily's account. The communication between banks is usually done through what is called SWIFT messages the Society for Worldwide Internet Financial Telecommunication. This is only a very simplified example, and there could be more than one intermediary bank. So you see, everything is registered in centralized ledgers at the banks. That means your money somehow is controlled by banks as well as the governments who regulate and supervise these banks. This process isn't quick. It takes time, hours and sometimes a few days for some transactions not to mention the fees for these banks to carry out these services. As you see, there is still a space for innovation. In October 2008, someone calling themselves Satoshi Nakamoto published a document online. This article suggested a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. They offered a complicated but innovative protocol based on some of the math born in cryptography to help circumvent the need for trust using CPU power to register the transaction in a decentralized blockchain network using 1. Digital signatures, 2. Private and public key pairs, and 3. Proof of work. Because of the trust in this protocol presented by cryptographers, the media, and some billionaires, Many people are now investing in Bitcoin and other virtual currencies. The investments so far take the form of investing in securities, not as a medium of exchange. People purchase Bitcoin using fiat and wait until the price goes up. Then they sell the virtual currency and convert it into fiat again. Despite the solutions provided by this protocol, there are several concerns about using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. The main concern is trust. Will the public trust a virtual currency that does not have a legal tender? At the same time, it is almost impossible for most people to understand how it works, or who even invented this protocol. What if quantum computers in the future can break the encryption algorithms used in Bitcoin? Experts now talk about the central bank digital currency, 
a digital currency with the benefits of Bitcoin protocol. In its report, Virtual Currency's Key Definitions and Potential AML CFT Risks, published in June 2014, the Financial Action Task Force mentioned that virtual currencies are vulnerable to money laundering and terrorist financing abuse for many of these reasons. 1. Anonymity Virtual currency systems can be traded on the internet. Anyone can download the free open source software from a website to send, receive and store bitcoins and monitor bitcoin transactions. 2. No historical records The bitcoin protocol does not require or provide identification and verification of participants or generate historical records of transactions that are necessarily associated with real-world identity. 3. Decentralized. There is no central oversight body. 4. No transaction monitoring tools. No AML software currently available to monitor and identify suspicious transaction patterns. 5. No asset freeze control. Law enforcement cannot target one central location or entity, administrator, for investigative or asset seizure purposes. Remember, money is the value of things, the medium of exchange that everyone knows will be an accepted form of payment for goods and services. Does this definition apply to Bitcoin? Can you identify who made a transaction using Bitcoin? Can you identify who received that value and why? How do you stop it if it's related to a crime?